Hello everyone, I'm Mike Michaud and we welcome you to MHS Sports on MHTV. Today we're at Piper Field at Marblehead High School as the Magicians boys soccer team takes on the O'Brien Tigers from Boston in the first round of the MIAA Division III North Tournament. O'Brien used to be Boston Technical School, I believe. It's now, it's now O'Brien Technical and Mathematics School or something like that. It's, a, it's one of the three schools in Boston that are called exam schools. You have to qualify, you have to pay, take an exam to get in. So these kids are probably very bright. As far as soccer is concerned, they're young. There are three seniors on the team, four juniors, seven sophomores, and seven freshmen. So if nothing else, Marblehead's upperclassmen uh, should be able to display their leadership and win this game. O'Brien has the ball to take uh, to begin the game. They pass well. Um, Melbourne's already on the attack. Kai Uke with the first shot toward the net, blocked by the O'Brien defender. Chris Brady on defense. He is a sweeper for this game as usual. Now playing defense back there with him is number 12. Henry Poulin, and on the, that's on the left side. That's Poulin right there. Poulin with the ball, sends it up, or tries to send it up. O'Brien contains the ball. There's a shot on net. Pierce Law is in net. Uh, that shot was from number 10 on the O'Brien team. He is a midfielder. And a junior. One of the best players on the team. There he goes, number 10, right there. He can shoot from out there and probably will. Look at him dribble. Can't get by Brady. Pass out by a head. From what I've seen of number 10, uh, he's a good ball handler, but not a terrific shooter. is Brady. Brady incidentally made the NEC All-Star second team. Did number 14 for O'Brien with a shot on net. Number 14 is one of the captains of this team. He's normally, he normally plays defense. It looks like he's in a striker position for this game at right forward, or left forward, I should say. Fighting for the ball is Kai Uke, who's the other All-Star NEC All-Star, second team All-Star, along with Chris Brady from the Marblehead team. O.K. has had a terrific season, so has Brady. Uh, O.K. at the forward position, Brady at the sweeper position. Brian way off into the corner, trying to get something going to number 10. He pushes. Brady out of the way, trying to get to the ball. No call from the refs, although there was an obvious push as the O'Brien player tried to get to the ball. Brady was in the way. He couldn't get through Brady, is what it amounts to, so he pushed him. Ball went out anyway. Here's a big cross field pass, trying to clear number 14, who's one of the captains. Nice play there by number 21 from Marblehead, Liam Healy, who headed the ball out. But it's a corner kick for O'Brien. O'Brien definitely playing up to the same level as Marblehead. They're not being intimidated. They're not being dominated either. Corner kick for O'Brien. All the way across, tries to head it in, number 10 once again. Number 10 seems to be one of their key players. On the right side. <coughs> Bryant with the ball. Headed out by Pullen. 
Ooh. A lot of contact there, no call. Kai Uke, number 13, went head to head, literally. Kai Uke being pushed in the back, no call. There's some pushing going on here. We expect it to be a physical game. It's a tournament game, after all. O'Brien well, plays in the Boston League, which can be a tough league, depending on what division they're in. O'Brien, and when Brian Flair is down, uh, I don't know what happened exactly, but he looks like he's got a an injured foot. He may have twisted an ankle. He's limping now, limping across from the other way, across the way on the other side of the field. For some reason, the ref allowed play to continue. There was, I think all the players, Marblehead players stopped because of the injury, expecting something to be called, but nothing was called. Trying to get something going here, Marblehead is. Kai right, okay with the ball. Way off into the corner, gonna cross it somewhere. He tries to cross right in front of the net. Maybe a little too far in, too close to the keeper. <coughs> Marblehead now seems to be waking up. Maybe they're gonna get their game going. So far, they've been pretty somnolent. Paul Elder here on number 10. Number 10, nice footwork. He can, he can, he handles that ball extremely well. After it is number 11, Colgar. Trying to get something going here. There's Elder on number 10. Number 10, nice footwork once again. He dribbles extremely well. Got Elder trying to push him away from the ball. Unsuccessfully pull in, kicks the ball out. That was a handball, not called. Unintentional, no doubt. A shot to the goal, picked up by the keeper, job, Pierce. Pierce Law. That ball takes a kind of bad bounce. It's Brady after the ball, heads it back toward. Looks like a young fellow. Elder after the ball, kicked up. And Elder. Geyer trying to dribble through. Back to Geyer, trying to get it through. His marble head, trying to split that defense. That's Alvarez fighting for the ball. And it's off. O'Brien. Elder with the ball, trying to get something down the middle. A little too far, and the keeper's there to pick it up. It will be a goal kick. Well, O'Brien, sun comes out on part of the field. This was a four o'clock start, so we're heading toward the late afternoon. Even if the sun does shine, we're not gonna get much of it. Is <laughs> Will Gadd is fighting for the ball. The referee's not calling much of anything, it looks like. I don't know what league these refs are coming from. Maybe they're used to professional football or soccer. They seem to be letting a lot go. Let me put it that way. O'Brien with the throw in. Here we are at the 32 minute mark of the first half. A few shots on net, nothing serious by either team. I'll hit fighting for control there. It's okay, sends it off to, ahead of himself. He got, he's got speed. He's ahead of the defender. Tries to get a shot off. Nothing doing. Oh, off the top crossbar. Marblehead's definitely on the attack here. There's Alvarez with a shot. Did that goes through. No, yes, yes. It did cross the line, went over the line. A shot by Alvarez, Claudia Alvarez, at the 31st minute of the first half. 
I guess it would be the ninth minute of the first half. 31 minutes left in the half. Alvarez scores with a nice shot off the keeper. It bounced off the keeper and went over the line. The ref was right there to catch it, and he did make the correct call. That was a goal. So here we are with 31 minutes left in the first half. Marblehead leading, one to nothing. O'Brien with the ball, trying to send it down deep. There's Brady, checking, sends it back to midfield. We're pushing the back, nothing called. He's number 14, one of the captains for O'Brien. He's a pretty good player, as you can see. Tries to get it to number three, back to number 10. Here's Cole Gar with the ball. Oh, nice pass to Kaya Uke. Can't get through. Here's Elder. Elder back. He's pulling. Getting it out to midfield. Alvarez fighting for the ball. Gets the ball. Can put it in the corner here. Can't get it past the defender. O'Brien tries to clear, but the ball is out. Pulling with the throw in. Number 16 was knocked down. Will Gaddis was knocked down. No call. <laughs> O'Brien comes into this game as the, they're trying to spring number 10 once again. Can't get by three defenders. Here's Alvarez on the right side. On the attack, should try to cross it. He does to Kai Uke. Number seven, back to Elder. Elder dribbling, trying to get through. Not quite. Over to Gaddis. Okay, can't get by the front line defense. Back to Brady. Brady to Pullen. Pullen down to Kai. Okay. Back to Pullen. Elder, Gaddis, coach yelling at the, at the team to change field across the field, bring it down to this side of the field. I don't know if you saw something on this side. There's number 10, really good ball handler. Nice footwork. Bobblehead with the ball. Changing fields once again from right to left, back to right. They're gonna wear these guys out, if nothing else. Marblehead making everybody run. Number 21 can't get it through. And Flynn Healy taken down. And the ref does call it. That was a pretty obvious takedown. So it will be a free kick for Marblehead from about 25 yards on the football field out. It's about a 30 yard kick from where he is. If he, if he can put it into the near corner, which the keeper is defending, well maybe now the far corner, the keeper is defending the near corner. If he puts it way off, and he tries for the far corner. There it is. What a play, that was Brady. Chris Brady <laughs> left the sweeper position on a beautifully timed play. He caught the ball in mid-flight and tapped it in with his foot. Great play, beautiful goal. Oh, what a beautiful goal that was. That should make the highlight reel. So here we are with 28 minutes left in the first half. Melbourne had up two to nothing using their experience, obviously, and their upperclassmen. I mean, Bobblehead has, I forget how many seniors, actually, I don't know how many seniors, but they're obviously a more experienced team than a team that has seven sophomores and seven play, uh, freshmen playing on the team in this tournament with only three juniors, four juniors and three seniors. That's not of a lot of experience at any level. 
Anyways, I began to say, O'Brien comes in with a record of 8-8 eight and eight in the Boston Division Three League. Uh, not spectacular, but you never know because each league is different, has a different level of competition. Anyway, they are seated 11th in this tournament, and one of the O'Brien players is down. I don't know whether uh, the referee is signaling time out, calling for medical attention. I didn't see what happened. It didn't look like a, a heavy collision, but he's holding on to his ankle. Left ankle, it looks like, his left leg. And maybe he twisted it. Uh, maybe he, it got stepped on. Hard to tell at this point. Anyway, as I was saying, Marblehead comes into this game with a record of 10, 5, and 3. Uh, 10 wins, 5 losses, and 3 ties, which is a vast improvement over last year's record of uh, 7 wins. I mean, 3 wins is a lot in any league. They made the tournament last year, so this is their second straight year making the tournament. Uh, with his coach that came in last year. And uh, they've improved considerably over last year. Their passing is crisper. They have a bunch of uh, young players on the team, but they play well together. Uh, their defense is highlighted by Chris Brady, the NEC All-Star in the sweeper position. Usually Ian McIver is back there also. Uh, he did not start this game, but here he comes in right now. For number 23, Jamie Martin, who played an outstanding game the last couple of games we've seen. But Ian McIver is the regular uh, fullback on the left side. Uh, one of Brady's wings, and he's been injured last couple of games. Yeah, Marblehead is on the attack again. Brady trying to get something going. Not too successfully. Marblehead's attack is now beginning to swarm. I think they've got this team figured out to some extent. They have a good idea what these guys are gonna do. And Bryant is having a hard time getting anything going. Oh, there's a cross pass goes up. Bryant's record uh, prior to this game is eight and eight. No ties, eight wins, eight losses. Nice back kick by one of their young players, it looks like. Gaddis over there. Hunting for the ball. Alder back to Pullen. Over to Gar. And this Chris Colford fi fighting for the ball, trying to retain control. Bryant kicks it out. I'll do with the throw in. Gaddis trying to get it across, not quite. Gar with a shot. Oh. If number 21, Liam Healy, had been able to get his foot in there, that was a goal. A beautiful cross pass. I don't think Liam expected it. Nice idea, nice pass from Colgar. Out to midfield. Here's McIver with a nice header. Whoops. Off marble head. Liam Healy fighting for the ball. Here's Geyer. Controls, nice foot control, ball control. Healy. Over to Colgrid. Healy. Colgrid. Guy Healy, Healy with the ball down in the right end. All he has to do is cross it toward the middle. Nice pickup saved there by the keeper. He saw that coming, we all did. Good shot on that, nice play there, Marblehead. McIver. I think Marblehead is beginning to feel it. Elder, Elder, getting pushed, gets up. No call, it was a call. Free kick, Marblehead. 
This is the fourth game that's been played on this field this, this well, no, actually, the third game that's been played on this field this week. The girls' soccer team lost to Danvers after a terrific game yesterday. Uh, the game went into two overtimes and then finally ended up with PKs, penalty kicks. The Danvers did better on. They got four, two, Marbleheads two, and won the game two to one. But it was an exciting game, well played game throughout. The Andrews had beaten Marblehead twice during the regular season. And although the game was tied in overtime, Marblehead led practically the entire game one to nothing before Danvers tied it up with five minutes left to play in the game. Then after two overtime periods of 10 minutes, it went to the PK. A little bit of back and forth here. Brian trying to spring, he was offside. He was just about a foot behind Brady. And the ref was right there to catch it. Okay there. Good D there by number 11, Henry. That was Guy, sorry. Here it is, off to Alvarez again. Alvarez trying to get something going, Guy, off to the get. Right side to Liam Keeley. Really can't get by number 14, one of the captains for Bryant. Also, I believe he's one of the seniors on the team. Here goes number 10, trying to get something going. A little push. Not called. He can't get by the defender, though, the Marblehead defender. McIver. Brian trying to get something going here. There's Brady heading out toward midfield. Guy lets it bounce. <coughs> Brady starting, I mean, O'Brien trying to get something going from the back, way backfield. Trying to spring somebody. He get by Pullen. Pullen just kicks it out. Let them run, he says. I think Marblehead has command of this game right now leading two to two to nothing with 21 or 22 minutes left in the first half nice fall day temperature in the 60s good day for soccer Brady gets it out but he's called for a push just above the 18 yard line oh, the ref is pulling his own shirt indicating that Brady was pulling the other guy's shirt maybe he was so Bryant will get a free kick from about 18 yards up. Actually, it's more like um, 25 yards up, 27 yards up. And taking the kick is number 10. We've complimented this player on his footwork. I don't think he's that accurate though. I watched him shoot before the game and he was missing an awful lot. Maybe he was just faking it. We'll see on this kick. If he, he could put it into one of the far corners, I think that's what he will try to do. Bend it like Beckham. Uh, he tried to put it into one of the corners but it was an easy shot, shot to stop. Pierce Law was right there to catch it. Here we go, Brian trying to get something going, number 14 there. But stepping in is Colquitt. Geyer to OK to Alvarez. That's off. Substitutions for Marblehead in McIver coming in. Paul Elder going out. Looks like McIver is going to play the center position. And number 23, Jamie Martin, is going to play the right fullback position. Shot there by Marblehead well over the net from the right side. Uh, I don't know how many shots on net Marblehead has had, but they've had some nice shots. Two of those went in. Marblehead is leading two to nothing. And the way this game is progressing, I think they're gonna wear out the young players. 
from Bryant. At number 10 again, getting trying to get something started. He's like the quarterback for this team. Gad is fighting for it. Still fighting for it. So <laughs> Might have been a handball, but it was inadvertent. Brady letting that ball roll. Kiva picks it up. Pierce Law off to the right side to Pullen. Pullen going to bring it up. Off to 16. Gaddis. Nice pass there by McIver, who's playing like the stopper position. This is unusual. Maybe they want McIver to get something started or use him to start the offense. Unusual. It's his first game back after the injury. He had to sit out a few games. And here's Gar with the throw in. Off the car, okay. O'Brien. Back to Pullen. Back to the middle. I uh, can't get anything going on that right side. Number four is holding on to the ball too long. I suspect he's a young player. Here goes Marblehead. Uh, but Brian succeeds in getting the ball. Here's Alvarez on the right side crossing to OK. OK trying to get something by there. Gaddis after it. Brian kicks it out. At number 10, he's going to, that was almost a scissor kick. Brady with a high ball, high pop up. Guy, uh, I think he stepped on the Bryant player's ankle. Number three is limping. The referee's calling, uh, referee. We have a sub coming in, number 14 for Bryant replacing number four, the sophomore. 14 is a junior and one of the captains, one of the better defenders. Now, okay, fighting for the ball, gets tripped. Free kick from Marblehead. It was okay fighting for the ball against uh, one of the freshmen, but a big freshman on the Bryant O'Brien team. Nothing going there. Nice pass, nice pass. Martin doing some nice passing there. That's Jamie Martin. Trying to get something going with Liam Healy. Healy's coming out and coming in from all ahead to Jacob Wickar. Healy's had a good game, getting a lot of applause from the uh, listening audience, the viewing audience. Here's Wickar, just came into the game. Number 10 being fancy. He, he's, he's got a lot of form, he's, he's a nice play to watch. Shot from way out, 30 yards out. Nobody in front of the net to block Law's vision. Is pulling, bring the ball up, sends it up. That was a nice play, pass. To Colquitt, now fighting for it, or running for it in the corner and fighting for it. I think it was off. Well, the ref saw it was off. Uh, O'Brien player. And with the throw in is number 13, Ian McIver who is now playing well up in this game. Nice throw and all the way to center. Geyer using his body. Brady gets it out. 